come along with us for our herringbone backsplash install and watch us transform our kitchen from this to this. Hi there, we're Jonathan and Whitney. We are the faces, the beautiful faces of Follow the Whisper. We are glad that you found us. If you are looking for more of our vlog style videos that just kind of highlight our day-to-day -day life and the overall process, we have another video of our backsplash install, more of a behind the scenes, I would say. So we will link that video at the end of this one if you are looking for it. But if you are looking for how to, on install and DIY tips and tricks, then you are in the right place and this is the video for you. If you are doing a backsplash yourself, we would recommend watching the entire video through because there were some things we learned along the way as well that might be helpful pointers. This is obviously a how-to video from DIYers, so we're not professionals, but it, it worked for us and it turned out beautifully, so um, Hopefully some of the experience that we're sharing can be helpful to you too. We are going to get into it here with the install. You will not see us in this format, um, you know, just the casual conversation until the end. We will pop back in at the end and give you just some overall remarks, tips, tricks, things like that. But yeah, happy viewing. You will get to see all of the install process, our highs and lows, and we hope that it is helpful for you on your project. Just recovering from a cold in case I sound a little bit raspy, but I wanted to introduce you to our kitchen and our project. Here is our kitchen. My family and I just bought a rancher on a 10 acre property and we are renovating it from top to bottom, both inside and outside. In our kitchen here, you can see that we have an L shape arrangement that we are going to be putting the backsplash on. And this time we opted for a natural stone in a herringbone pattern. It's a honed finish. Let me show you what one that is open looks like. Very gray, you can see that there is some um, variation in the color itself so we will probably notice more of that when we get it up on the wall we have very light countertops we went with a white quartz and then obviously as you can see we have white cabinets initially we were thinking a white subway tile on the backsplash for ease of installation with those squared off edges but we thought that that might be just too much white for our space so we're thinking that the gray stone this time is just going to really accent the counter and pull out the veining there. As you can see, there is some veining in the quartz. It is a gray color and we think that it's really going to be heightened instead of if we used a white subway tile, which is what we used in our last renovation, we think that it may have detracted a little bit and taken away a little bit from the countertops themselves and we love them. So we wanna add to them. We don't wanna take away from them. As far as first steps, we want to prepare the area for the install. So a couple of things that we have already done and some of the things that we are going to do. As you can see, Clark, who is my nine-year-old, old son, he's my helper over here. Can you smile and say hi? <laughs> he's gonna be helping me with the project, but he went around and took off the face plates off of our outlets and our switches. Best practice is to turn off the electricity to your outlets. We are going to be going up to the ceiling here above the range and we are going to be going up to the ceiling around the window. We do of course wanna protect these beautiful countertops that we just had installed. We are going to go ahead and put some drop cloths down there and just keep them as safe as possible during the install. Okay, so we are going to make our inaugural cut with our wet saw here. For tile jobs, it is recommended that you use a wet saw with a diamond blade. So that is what we have here. We are going to use pieces that are cut flat along the bottom to sit on the countertop because it's just gonna be easier to work with a flat piece that we can sit right on there and build off of. So we're gonna go ahead and cut our first piece here. Okay, so I just wanted to talk you through a couple of the things that we are doing as we have made our first few cuts and sort of have things laid out. My thinking is it is better to do as much of the cutting ahead of time and plan ahead. That way, when you are ready to go ahead and stick your mastic or your adhesive up on the wall, you can do it, 
having your tiles kind of ready to go. All right, so what we have done back here, we are going to start in this corner and work our way over. We cut the flat bottom and the flat side on the first piece, which will go up here like this. This piece, like I said, we just wanted to start with a flat edge on the bottom, so that is where we cut. And then to know how high to cut our second piece, we knew that this span here was 18 and a quarter inches up to the underside of our cabinet. This piece I measured from the bottom to the top line here, that was 18 and a quarter. That is where we used our wet saw to cut the top. So now those pieces fit like a glove over here. And then we have our next row of pieces that we are planning for. As you can see, there is an outlet that is interfering here. The first piece is able to go up without any problems. It will sit like that. But this piece, the second piece here, is going to be a problem. So we are trying to see if we can use the cardboard that comes on the underside of the tile sheet as a template to figure out where we need to cut for the outlet. So we're gonna work on that a little bit and if we find success, then I will let you. My husband, Jonathan, is off of work and ready to join Clark and I. So we are going to get going here. What we're gonna do is he's gonna bring the laser level over and we're gonna shine that on the wall so that we ensure that all of our pieces are level and lining up because it's hard when all of these pieces are so small to ensure that you're doing it accurately. You don't wanna end up, you know, kind of sloping one way or the other. So we're gonna get the laser level up there to give us a guide so that we can match the points um, to where they need to go. And we have our first couple of pieces cut here. What we did for this first outlet for now is we measured where it needed to be, traced it out. We made the straight lateral cuts here with the wet saw, but obviously we can't get into do the length cut here with the wet saw. So then on the back of our grid, we just used our utility knife to notch out where that outlet would be. As you can see though, it does leave an irregular shape that we will need to fill in. So I have the piece here with these tiles marked off. So what we'll have to do then at the end is go back in and fill in with little tile pieces around the outlet. I'm not sure that that is the best way. Jonathan was thinking about possibly getting a Dremel or an angle grinder. So we'll, we'll see, we might change that up as we go along, but for now that is the plan and we will let you know if we alter that. All right, there's no time like the present, so here goes nothing. We decided to use a type one mastic that is pre-mixed instead of a thin set. Some people prefer one over the other. We just thought this was easier. This is what we used in our last renovation. So we're gonna go for it and yeah, we'll, we'll see how this goes. When you are installing mosaic tiles on a grid like we are, instead of just single tiles, you need to use a rubber float like this to ensure that you get even adhesion. Looks pretty good to me, I think. All right, so Jonathan is using the float to put the second row in there. We did end up doing what was recommended and taking the outlet out 
We do have that breaker there tripped right now uh, just to be safe, but that allowed us to get the tile underneath, you know, then it, then it would sit level against the wall, sit flat against the wall. One thing that we're finding, most of the videos that I watched of herringbone backsplash installs was lighter colors, white, cream, that sort of thing. We're using a darker gray here, if that's not obvious and the adhesive is very light colored. So we're trying to be really careful with washing our hands and stuff, but we do have some spots that you can see the adhesive coming through. So hopefully <laughs> that doesn't bite us in the butt in the long run, we'll see. So we have another kind of tough um, tile coming up here because if you can see here, we have two a switch and an outlet that we have to work around. But you can use the cardboard backing that comes on the tiles and you can use it as a template. So what I did is I cut out these notches at the bottom where this um, tile down here sits. And then I was able to kind of sit this up there and notch out where these outlets are gonna go. So I'm gonna try to use this as a template. The bottom is gonna have to be cut off. Yeah, just put those up separate. So it is day two of our tiling project. We did not get a ton of the backsplash completed the first night that we worked on it. Just this back corner here. Don't let that discourage you. I know it doesn't look like we got very much done in the few hours that we were working, but there's a lot of planning and a lot of a learning curve that goes into it at first. So things do pick up speed, but I will say that the herringbone pattern is a bit tricky as a DIYer because number one, the pattern in and of itself is complicated to wrap your brain around and how things fit together. Number two, there are a lot of really tiny tiles that even though the wet saw does a great job, they can get caught up in there and chipped and things like that. It is difficult going around outlets because there are no straight tiles to cut. So you can't simply use a tile scorer. You can't simply use use you know one of the tricks where you cut the backing out it's a lot more complicated than that when we were hanging our first batch of tiles on the wall we noticed that the basalt that we are using is very very porous we had not researched the material itself a ton prior to install now that we have had some time to do that what we are finding is that you really are supposed to seal it prior to install and after install. We knew that we had to seal it afterwards, but we did not think about the fact that it should be sealed before so that the adhesive wouldn't get into the pores. There are itty bitty holes in almost all of the pieces here. So if we didn't seal this prior to installing it and we accidentally got a little of the adhesive here, the adhesive is going to kind of jam up all of those pores and you can see it. There are a couple of tiles inside, unfortunately, that have the white adhesive on them and we're not sure that we're gonna be able to get it off. We are gonna go ahead and seal these prior to install and see if that helps us today. And then we're gonna use a grout that is a charcoal color and very similar to the tiles themselves so that we don't end up with lighter color tiles than what we are hoping for. So here we go, day two, hoping to really, really make a lot of headway on the backsplash install today. I have my big model out here. This is Arlo. He's our 150 pound Newfoundland, but Arlo is being Vanna White and showing you. So I have a bunch of these mosaic sheets out here that I have just sealed and I wanted to keep them outside because you can see the variation in the tile color a little bit better out here under natural light. Like down here in the corner, there are some darker tiles. Over here, there's some darker tiles. So it is important to mix and match from different boxes, especially with this specific tile. Many of the reviews that were negative were because they were just pulling sheet by sheet and going as they were pooling and then they realized that half of the kitchen had a backsplash that was a darker tone and half of the backsplash was a lighter tone or a warmer tone or whatever so it is really important with these sheets to pick from different boxes. I have them all laid out from various boxes here so that we can make sure that we are interspersing those darker tiles. There are even a few that have kind of like a browner hue. You can see those here. So again, just making sure that we mix those in thoughtfully so that it does not turn out darker tiles all in one blob. So we're gonna Mix and match here. Okay, so status update before we go any further here. We have all of our bottom pieces 
all the way around. Obviously these are attached already. We did those the other day, but including over here, we went ahead and cut all of the bottom pieces so that we have those ready to go. We think that cutting all the bottom pieces first was helpful to kind of get us set up and then we will continue to cut as we go. We're gonna keep rolling here. The mantra that I keep repeating to myself after every single piece is, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this because herringbone is a little bit tough. But what we're doing here, as I am laying each piece, as I mentioned, we started with the flat pieces on the bottom. And then what I do is I measure the distance from the bottom of the cabinet to the deepest part here. So to the point of the next piece. This measurement is right around nine and a half inches. So then I come over and I get a new sheet. I make sure that the orientation of this piece matches the pieces that are on the wall already. And I will measure from the point, which again is going to be that deepest point here on the wall. So from the point here at the bottom of my new piece, I'm going to measure just shy of nine and a half inches. I'm gonna make a mark along there. And that is where I will make my cut for this next piece. We are just about ready to lay the bottom pieces that are gonna go behind our range. And we kind of are going against what a lot of folks recommended back here. And I will tell you why. A lot of people recommended putting up a little board in line with the countertops as kind of a support and kind of a level. We do not think that from a support standpoint that you need that because you should not be relying on a piece of wood to hold your tiles in place. You should be relying on the adhesive that you're using. If you're getting a lot of slide, then it's probably because your adhesive is too thin, you're not using the right kind of adhesive for your stone, or or you have applied too little of it. So we're following the directions on our adhesive as far as how much to apply. We have not been having problems on any of our other panels with slippage. So we did not put a board back there. As you'll see, Jonathan is just applying it right to the wall and using the float to press it in. Now, I will say that perhaps the folks who were using those were not using a laser level, and so maybe they were using it more just to ensure that it could rest against that flat spot and be level with the other pieces. I'm not sure if you can see the laser on the wall there. I don't know if that shows through the camera, but we are using a laser level so that we know that each piece is matching up. We're using it with the points the uppermost um, tip of the tiles. So yeah, we didn't put a board back there. We just applied right to the wall because we are ensuring that they are applied level. Okay, so these mosaic herringbone pattern tiles are a bugger when it comes to cutting around the outlets. You can't just use your utility knife to cut the backing and then have a perfectly little square or rectangle hole for your outlet. So what we have done, as you will see back here, is we will use the utility knife to cut out the section that needs to go around the outlet, um, but it does not leave you with a rectangle like your outlet is. So if you can see there, I have pencil markings on the tiles where they need to be cut. And you could go back and use your wet saw, but I am here to tell you that we have been using tile nippers and guess what, they work just fine. Did not see many other folks recommending that or telling me to use that. However, they work for us. So that's what we're using. We just use tile nippers. And here, Jonathan, demonstrate once you're done using the float. Okay. All right, so we just line up the nips with our line there. It doesn't seem like it should work. Then it does. Yeah, and then we have our pretty, piece, pretty. so then we will just take that off of the matting. Put a little bit of mastic on the back, and you just pop it right in. at it with the backsplash today. It is my birthday. <laughs> what a great way to spend my birthday, but honestly, no, I'm very excited. So what I am starting with is going back in and any of these little pieces that are missing, either here or I can show you, like along the bottom here, you can see we have a couple of pieces missing or over here. 
or around the outlet. I'm gonna go back in and fill those in first, just so that we make sure we have an ample amount of adhesive on there to get those little tiles to stick and to dry properly before we attempt grouting in a couple of days. And we're gonna keep plugging here. We are hoping to have all of the backsplash installed today and do the grouting next week. I feel like we have made so many mistakes that I don't know what things I have told you and what I have not. <laughs> this is a tough project, but we will prevail. I have said that my only birthday wish is to get the installation done. But I do want to let you know that just because a piece fits does not mean that it is correctly installed. I had this corner piece cut. It fit in here super nicely. And then we just kept thinking, okay, something is not right because the piece that we were measuring up at the top to fit in there did not match these end pieces. And let me see if I can turn this around and show you what is wrong. So look in there closely. It looks beautiful, right? Herringbone, right? Nope, just kidding. Cause herringbone goes up and down. And look, we have a down, up, down, down. So right there, I continued the pattern incorrectly. So that piece needed to come out and we will cut and try again. I know we keep saying that this is like backsplash day. Hopefully we're gonna finish today. We still need to get up and around the window because we made the decision to go up to the ceiling. And then we can let it dry for a couple of days before we go ahead and do the grouting. It so. is grout night and I have to tell you that I'm a little bit scared because this project has not been my favorite. It has not been Jonathan's favorite, but we did it and it is definitely doable. The herringbone is tough and not a very DIY friendly. The basalt that we chose, the material, is also not super DIY friendly, but we have a couple coats of sealer on the grout. The adhesive is fully dried. It was installed several days ago at this point. Tonight is grout night. I would like to go into this feeling as hopeful and happy as I can. I was just on a field trip with the kids all day outside, so I'm a little bit white. So I am going to take a 20 minute power nap before we do this thing. So here's to the nap that is going to rejuvenate my body and my soul so that I have a positive outlook on grouting. It's gonna be awesome, it's gonna be good, I'm gonna be successful, and then our backsplash will pretty much be done. Hopping in for a status update. We've got up up to the um, yeah where the, the range hood's gonna be, and Whitney's doing an awesome job. Um, so the verdict is, this is easier in some regards. It's not as tedious or whatever, but I will say, number one, the type of grout that we are using, which is pre-mixed is really tough on a vertical surface because it's heavy. And so it wants to just fall down on the floor. So technique, don't watch that. <laughs> but it's coming along. You can see down there where it's starting to dry that it does uh, look really nice. This towel uh, technique that I'm doing is not in the books and not recommended, but it doesn't seem to be damaging the new grout at all. And it helps me to just see where I need to wipe better. So, so far so good. It's very messy, but coming along. So we're putting on the finishing touches. That way we can finish up our backsplash videos. So Clark Doug is putting the face plates on. Jonathan is installing the range hood. I mentioned it a few times during install, but we used white adhesive. That just is the color of adhesive. And our tiles were obviously gray. So 
any area where the adhesive got on the side of the tile or on the front of the tile, even though they were sealed, it dried on there and it is still showing even after grouting because the grout obviously doesn't come to the full front of the face. So let me turn this around and show you what I'm talking about. So like over here, for example, you can see those white spots. Whether or not this is the best idea is still to be determined, but what we think we are going to do is go get a charcoal colored Sharpie and just kind of draw on those edges. The tiles have a lot of color variation as it is. They are not one tone, they are multi-tone. So that's gonna give us a little bit of grace, I think. It was worth it to save several thousand dollars in doing it ourselves, even if that means that we have to go back with a Sharpie. And there's after my Sharpie work. So you can see it's not perfect, but it did a heck of a better job at least. We're back. Thank you for watching. Hopefully watching us go through the process will be helpful for you. A couple of things that I would recommend. I know that we mentioned these in the install, but I do feel like they are important enough to mention again. Number one, do your research with your stone. We did not research basalt a whole ton before we started. And then after we got through those first couple of panels, realized, oh shoot, this is a material that you're supposed to seal before you even install it. So make sure you know the material that you're working with. Follow the instructions on the adhesive and the grout because there are a ton of options. You can mix them yourselves, you can get the pre-mixed, whatever you decide is best for your project, I think is fine as long as you follow the directions on the material itself. As just a reminder again to when you're putting the tile up, you do wanna mix and match from different boxes because you can get you know a lot of the same shade. You might end up with a whole section that's darker than the other areas. So helping to kind of diversify that, uh, you'll want to pull from different boxes. So. Yeah. Make sure you cover your counter work surface. You just spent money on a beautiful countertop. You don't want it to be <coughs> ruined. So make sure you take the time to cover that. I believe in being honest. And so I won't sugarcoat this project and tell you that it was an easy peasy one. No. But what we will say is that seriously, you can do it. Just go into it knowing that if you want herringbone and you're a DIYer, herringbone is definitely more difficult, like substantially more difficult than subway tile or even the mosaic tiles that are more regularly shaped, like rectangles or squares. But all of that being said, you absolutely can do it. As you can see behind us and from the before and after shots, mm -hmm. it does turn out beautifully if you are patient with yourself and give yourself the time that you need. All right, so how would you rank this on a DIY difficulty scale? Considering like the things that we have done before, projects for this renovation on a scale of zero being super easy and 10 being extremely hard. Maybe an eight or a nine. I, I mean, I don't wanna go like too high because obviously there's some things that we've not gotten into. like structural beams and things yeah, like that that are I know, really but, difficult. But but for an average DIY person, sure. and again, I've said this before, we're really brave, I feel like, in terms of DIY stuff. We There isn't much that we won't do if we feel like we can do it safely. I was gonna say too, probably on the, the realm of things that we have done and plan to do, this, this really was difficult. I would say this was yeah. probably like an eight. Not saying don't do it if you wanna do it, you can do it, but the combo of the herringbone, yeah, the stone right. that we used, and the, um, the color that we used. We did it, I mean, I would say just, if you have like some experience or watch some other instructional videos, go for it. Yeah, you can do it. You might swear, but you can do it. Mm. Would you do it again? If we were back at square one, choosing the backsplash, the tiles again, would you Would you still choose these? I would, I love the look. I. So yeah, I would. So happy backsplashing. Yeah. Thanks for watching. See ya.